All right. Um, as you will know, and as Richard Preble mentioned in our last interview, we are heading into recession. What That's what the Reserve Bank says. And it's putting up the cash rate, which pushes up interest rates, which pushes up mortgage repayments, which collapses the price of residential property, which has been a pretty sure bet for a long time in New Zealand. Is that all bad news, though? And what are the people, and I've got to say this, major trading banks, retail banks, are heavily invested in New Zealand. They have as much to lose, if not more in dollar terms, than we do as mortgage holders, homeowners, prospective home buyers. So for some perspective from uh, the big financial institutions on what's happening in a recession and what this all means for us, we're joined by the ANZ, that's I think the biggest bank operating in New Zealand, the ANZ's chief economist, Sharon Zolner. Sharon, thank you for joining us on the platform. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good morning. All right, Sharon, there is no doubt that tough times or, or what we call a recession is coming, right? There, we, we're not going to dodge this bullet, right? Well, given the Reserve Bank uh, has basically said they are, in fact, trying to deliberately engineer it, and they certainly have the means to do so, uh, then there certainly is, I would say, an air of inevitability about it at this right. point. It's coming. It's coming. And I guess the natural reaction, and I'll be honest, as a, as a journalist of, of some long-standing you start writing the doom and gloom stories how bad it is um who's going to suffer where is going to get hit the worst is a recession all bad news for everyone it, there are certainly opportunities that come with recession but uh, particularly typically for those who have have cash i suppose uh but also recessions are actually kind of a, a bit of a necessary evil uh, insofar as uh, risk does exist and we tend to, as a society, as an economy, to sort of forget that for a while and, and live beyond our means. And it's certainly not just inflation that's pointing out the unsustainability of what's been going on. If you look at the likes of our current account deficit, which is, you can think of that as our credit card bill yep. with the rest of the world, it really has blown out. You know, we lost our tourism and foreign student revenue, which used to earn as much hard foreign cash as dairy and replaced it with selling houses to each other at ever more stupid prices with borrowed money. So, you know, there was a, while the labour market recovered and the level of GDP recovered, the quality and the sustainability of growth uh, really became a bit questionable. And, and eventually chickens come home to roost. Yeah, and we, we looked at our to, property right. prices and they just, they took off and basically shut a whole lot of people out of the market or made it very difficult for people to get into the housing market, didn't they? Yeah, certainly did. I mean, if you Google housing risks, uh, global housing risks, you'll find New Zealand at or near the top with the level of house prices, the main risk. Not actually household debt, which is a bit surprising. I mean, it is high, certainly, but it's actually lower relative to incomes than it was at the end of the last business cycle. And that's partly because uh, bank lending standards have been stricter through this cycle, but it's partly also because that denominator, household income, has been growing quite quickly and, and uh, inflating away people's debt to a small yeah. degree, helping yeah. out the market. So, Sharon, we're, we're seeing a, a pretty big re -cor a correction in house prices. What's the average that it's ex drop that we're expecting at the bottom of this well, cycle? Yeah, I think uh, you have to take anyone's house price forecast with a grain of salt. Clearly, um, we have no, no one's covered themselves in glory in predicting this in the last couple of years. Um, but our best guess is a 22% fall. Uh, and actually adjusting for wage growth, it would be a 32% fall. And remarkably, we would actually describe that as a soft landing, uh, which really is just a reflection of the fact that uh, in less than three years. So we are unwinding a, pr a pretty crazy spike. Okay. Uh, and actually the proportion of homeowners who would be in negative equity at the end of that process, if that was the end, would yeah. actually be quite low. Yeah, because so many, and look, it always struck me, my house worth, worth this, I'm rich. No, it doesn't matter what your house is worth on paper if you're not selling it and you intend to live in it. It's rather an illusory gain, isn't it? It is, and I guess we're about to find out how real people thought that wealth was. Um, you know, there will be a negative wealth effect, um, and particularly, you're already seeing it in durable. Now, jet ski sales are well down, I understand. So, um, <laughs> and cars, for sure. Yeah. Um, but in terms of everyday spending, I'm, I'm not convinced that 
that that crazy house price appreciation, we had a huge impact on people's day-to-day spending. But it is certainly another thing in the mix in terms of, of encouraging consumers to pull their heads in now. Yeah. Um, Sharon, what... <laughs> If we talk about the average person, the average New Zealander, and I don't know how you define that, if there's, a, there's an equation for that, what really is the impact on the average... Or let's say the average New Zealand household. Uh, how do they get... What's your best advice for them to get through the next uh, 18 months? Yeah, 